Yeah, pretty pretty fluttery. You know, good profiles, man. They sound good dry, and they sound good not so dry. <laughs> That's demonstrated? Right That's here. demonstrated. Yeah, that was good. Um, well, hello there. My name is HW. Hey, Vasus. And uh, we're back. And this is a, a topic I've been wanting to cover for a while. They saw in the little tile, it's, uh, it's compressors. Yeah. And this is one that I feel like gets um, not enough attention in the camper. Because there's only one compressor in the camper. Right. But it's pretty malleable. Yeah. You can really do a lot with it. Mm -hmm. So this has a good amount of compression on it. Mm -hmm. um, this is Stu's, Stu G's Arshel 1.4. And if we open up the compressor block, it looks like this. Um, 3.2 on the intensity, 1.2 on the attack, and a lot of squish, 2.7. Mm -hmm. At first glance, you'd think that this compressor, you know, with the Kemper, it's sort of, it, it's, it is what it is. But that squash control really gives us a lot of, um, a, a lot of options. First things first, let's try it without the compressor. You play, and then, and then I just want to hear your, your impressions. Okay. Okay, now with the compressor. Go ahead, what do you think? What'd you notice? <laughs> Uh, well, when you hit the compressor mm -hmm. right away, I it almost felt cleaner to me, uh -huh. and I think maybe because it, my signal isn't allowing yeah. it to get to the amp hard, yeah. hard enough. Um, but I, there, you know, there's a volume on there that could be cranked. Um, and then my other thought too was how compressed it felt with it off. You know, mm -hmm. just like the amp itself is is compressing and pretty driving. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it's behaving differently than like into a clean amp. You know. Yeah. Um, so Stu has put in a pretty aggressive setting, more aggressive than in the other Tone Junkie profiles, mm -hmm. you know, not the Stu G stuff. And that's because Stu is usually on his board, although he plays a number of compressors, he's usually playing um, the Orange Pulp and Peel from JHS, JHS okay. which is a Dan Armstrong style delay, uh, uh, compressor. Mm -hmm. Now compressors really do two things. You can think of compressors as actually compressing and also limiting. So they take the top part of your signal, the most intensity, the loudest signal, and they bring it down. They can they can limit it. Mm -hmm. And then they can take your quiet parts of your signal and bring them up. The Dan Armstrong is one that you really feel a lot because the way that achieves compression is by boosting your guitar signal with an internal boost and then limiting it. That's all that compressor, and that's why it's a very simple compressor, and it's a very old style compressor. It's not sophisticated like a studio compressor, like a um, 1076 mm -hmm. or uh, an LA-2A or something. Very simple compressor. Mm -hmm. So that feeling of like limiting the top end is one that does really well, mm -hmm. and that feeling of like, um, now this one's not doing as much, you can really get some soft attack here. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the cool things about the Kemper. Let's play around with these settings. This is temp Kemper tips and tricks after all, right? <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to put the squash at zero because we're going to talk about that in a minute. But go ahead and let's play with this thing. Um, let's just explain these controls. So intensity. Here's everything at zero. Is it going to make a difference in the sound? Play with it off and off. <laughs> Did it do something? <laughs> I, it feels overall quieter, you know. Like yeah, over, it might, you know. I'm sorry, I have the mix at 77, that's why. It actually cut a little signal out. But I think it's transparent. Let's try that. Okay. There's a little something happening. Mm -hmm. And I think that has to do with there are controls having to do with a compressor that are not in front of us. Like there is, there might be something. I don't know. You right. know what I mean? This isn't every control you'd even see on a on a, on a yeah, compressor. Yeah, like ratio, really. like we talked about. To totally. Under the hood. Yeah. 
So the ratio on this is always set to infinite, mm -hmm. um, or I guess one to one. Yeah, like it's giving you full. Yeah, it's always, and, and that's like vintage compressors are always like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's talk about intensity for a minute. What a lot of people may not realize is, at first, let me just go back and put this at a, at a reasonable attack. Let's put it at two. Let's leave the squash at zero. Intensity for the first half of this dial, all it actually is doing, it's not limiting. It's just bringing, oh, I'm sorry, it's only limiting. It's not bringing okay. the quiet parts up. up. Okay. So what that means is if you play really light and then dig in, you should still be able to maintain that playing light feel and okay. getting that thing. So try that. Let's put this at a fairly decent setting, which is 4.3, and play really light, like as light mm. as you can, and then and then and dig then in. Hit it hard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, there's it's, a little change with the compressor so on. Yeah, but yeah. it's not grabbing all your low stuff and bringing it up. Yeah. Okay, watch this. Once you put it past five, it really starts grabbing the low stuff and putting it way up high. I now, feel it. yeah. <laughs> now try to play that same low. I'm like barely hitting. Yeah, it. you can't. <laughs> Right, yeah, you can't get to a certain you, quietness. You can't, yeah. right? So that's the point of the intensity. It's it's both how much limiting at first, mm -hmm. and then after it's done limiting, how much boost on the bottom okay. do you want. and that's at five, like halfway. At five, on the okay. second half of the dial, and that's in the manual. People can read that in the that's manual. That's cool, okay. Um, so let's leave this at a setting of, uh, let's go for a fairly heavy compressor here. Try that, do you have a little dynamic range on the... Sounds pretty uniform. <laughs> it's pretty uniform. Let's try it right at five. Now the attack, the higher the attack value, the sooner it's going to grab, the more aggressive the attack. Okay. This can be confusing because a higher attack volume does not correlate to the more time it takes to grab the note. So this isn't in seconds or milliseconds or whatever. Right. We're controlling the time it takes the compressor to grab a note and get out. So what you're going to hear is if you play the tra you know, you'll hear the transient when I have this at lower speeds at zero, mm -hmm. you'll hear the transient that the note is free to sort of make the transient, the pick attack, mm -hmm. and then go up from there. And then the compressor is going to grab it. So lower attacks are going to give you kind of less of a compressed feel in, in you actually touching the strings, mm -hmm. but you're going to hear the compressor come in and grab it. So try that at this low, this, this attack of zero. Play okay. something a little. Now I'm going to turn that attack way up. I mean, it's slight, but it's there. Like, yeah. it's right away you're, you're feeling that grab on. And that is going to be more, uh, you're going to notice that more as I turn the squash up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the squash control is one, it, there's a reason you don't have squash on, a, on usually a compressor. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is something you could really totally achieve in an analog-only world. At zero, Kemper says... It, it behaves like you would expect. Mm -hmm. It's a normal compressor. When you go higher is where you're going to get some volume sag and you're going to feel a lot of squash. Mm -hmm. To me, the higher you go, the more it starts to take on the characteristics of a lot of like really, like a Ross compressor, a really heavy compressor, almost like a Dynacomp. Mm -hmm. You know those compressors that just have like no controls and they're just on? Yeah. So try that with the squash high. This is high squash. High squash. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's just like... 
It just slams it, right? Yeah. At five, it's like slamming it. Mm. So what, what Kemper says this is doing is when you turn that to zero, mm-hmm. it emphasizes the decay, the initial decay of the note, giving you a, a less squashed feel, the feeling like you don't have as much compression. Okay. But the compressor is actually still on. It's okay. letting that note sort of decay as it grabs it and, and goes. So it's still grabbing it and going, but it's emphasizing the decay on that note so it doesn't feel as compressed. Okay. Again, I'm not really sure what that... It's not sidechain compression. It's mm-hmm. not... We're not taking the mix down. We're not allowing the note to decay and mixing and compression. Mm-hmm. Kemper says that it's emphasizing the decay of the note. So that we get, I think, I think what that really means is we're able to get the difference in hitting the note hard and there's still some decay even as it grabs it and lets it go. Right. It's still grabbing it, but it's allowing some decay to happen so mm-hmm. it feels natural. Whereas when you throw it up here all the way on five, mm-hmm. that's where you even get, it's even limiting and you get sag. That, right. The feeling of almost like a tube rectifier like sagging. Pumping. But this is way more yeah. sag. Than you would get. Yeah, and I don't know this to be true, but it almost feels like release to me. Like it feels uh-huh. like it's hanging on and almost getting louder. Is yeah, it, is it's it... it definitely it, and it mentions this. You, you can it, it will even boost the note past what it was. Exactly. You know, so it. there's yeah. there's a bit of a here's a word, bloom. Oh, okay. ah, a bit of a bloom. I could see those. Of course, this is you know. Maybe no duh, but like very interactive controls. So, uh, no, so much. And you it, could crank that squash, but then mm-hmm. turn the intensity down so it's not. Yeah, and one popular setting might be we could leave the intensity, you know, at four. So it's 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 limiting us up top, mm-hmm. right? We could leave the squash relatively high, but with a low attack, we would be quick to grab those notes. Grabbing those notes faster would give us what we might feel is a more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Try try the the attack now. It's, it's just so I know. So is grabbing it faster the low end of the attack or the high end on the knob? The higher the attack, the, it... the 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 faster you're grabbing it. Okay. Sorry, I had this reverse. Okay. So the, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. So the faster we're grabbing. So that's it up grabbing here. it fast, uh-huh. and then the squash is high as well. Squash is just making everything okay you know very country now you get more transient right? yeah it doesn't uh-huh. grab it as fast it lets the transient come through unadulterated which which i like I yeah like right having that you, it makes you enough. feel like you're still more connected to the guitar mm-hmm. with this hand probably right um okay let's try this with a cleaner profile okay we've magically switched guitars tweed twin low b3 mm-hmm. and uh no compressor Cut that reverb. Look, play play another chord like that. You can you can you can I can hear that rise. I mean you can feel it probably so much more, but you can Mm -hmm. that's when you can hear that real, and if you want to get that Beatles stuff, a lot of the 60s tone, yeah. and a lot of the studio guitars you hear are so, so overly compressed. Mm-hmm. Um, here, let's try this again. Let's um, let's bring this down. This is where I would play it. I might have it somewhere like this. I think this is actually where the Tone Junkie stuff is. This might be a three something, I can't remember, but. And is it what's the mix and stuff at? Obviously? So the mix we have all at at 100% and okay. the volume at zero. Okay. That's the other thing. You can boost, you know, and do all that stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to take that up. I'm going to really get this squashy. I'm going to raise the intensity. I'm going to raise the attack up. I'll just go with that. Try that. Mm-hmm. 
That's it, real squashy yeah, guitar, so, right? right? Here's what's cool. Um, all the expensive expensive compressors, what do they allow you to do? And mix control. Mix control. Blend. Blend. Yeah. Blend it back in. The Kemper gives us that ability, and we can come down here, and we have a little volume control. So okay. I'm going to give you 85%. Can we hear it without the compressor really quick? It feels awesome, yeah. And it, <laughs> it makes the regular profile a little lifeless. Right, you know, right. When you kick that on. It's funny. So that's the trick, I think, with compressors. Uh, even even like how I run my Cali 76. Mm -hmm. um, or, um, gosh, what's the name of that one that we love? That Petty John. The Crush. The Crush. So See, good. I don't even know what it's called. It's just the, right. the it's just Petty the John compressor. <laughs> that green <Yeah>. compressor. <laughs> um, that's really great. We're going to do a video with some compressors. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of, I think, the magic. I like a really strong compressor. And then you back that mix off. And it's like having a blend control. Yeah. And it all of a sudden gives you back sort of all the stuff that you had to get rid of to get a great compression sound. Mm -hmm. Like you can get all that squash. You can let it grab the note early. Right. You, can, you can let it really limit and everything. Really give you that compressor sound. But all of a sudden you get the transient back. You mm -hmm. get the feel back. It's like you're playing the guitar and some... A guy in a booth put a compressor on your track, but and left all me the, alone. But left me alone. Right. Like, like now it sounds just yeah. better, right? And this is parallel compression. Is that the name? The when it sits next to you? Yeah, yeah, I believe okay. so. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and I, I, I don't have any reason to believe this doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we're not mixing it in in parallel. Yeah. You know, it seems to work. Play that a little more. It sounds so good. Yeah. <laughs> is that the the not compressed guitar decay is natural you know right, and so right. I'm hearing that too yeah it yeah. isn't fully compressed yeah. decay right which has a certain sound to it right you now which is nice it, what's what's funny is too that squash control at low settings is supposed to give you that mm -hmm. but that squashed sound is is very desirable this mm -hmm. compressor is a little bit hotter than unity that we have it set to right now and that's another right. thing is it's a little louder but um, that's one of the great things you can do. You can boost the front. You can have mm -hmm. a very really lively sound. Just when you're playing that, even with the delay and reverb, with all that stuff going on, you can hear the difference. Mm -hmm. It grabs the low note in the chord with a very jangly guitar, mm -hmm. and it gives it just a constant low, that beautiful telly sort of steely boom. Yeah. You know that, and it really evens out the chords. And then when you lean more on the low end. It, it brings the high end just a little bit out. Play a little more. Do it know, sounds so good. Do you know compression? <laughs> compression? No compression. Yeah. Why would this, I ever turn off a compressor? This is my opinion. <laughs> yeah. This compressor is as good, at, because of this mix control and the volume, mm -hmm. it's as good as a lot of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Now, an LA-2A, two, uh, two and by extension, the Bloom, mm -hmm. popular compressor, has a lot of characteristics of the LA-2A. That has a thing. It mm -hmm. does a thing. Right. right? If that's what you're into... You should get that. Yeah, you get it. The Cali 76 does what a 1076 does. Mm -hmm. It 
1176. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's expensive. 1176. Yeah. Um, it, it does that thing. Mm-hmm. It feels to me, and I love the Cali 76. Cali 76. Mm-hmm. It feels to me like you're. It feels to me like a, there's. I'm somehow playing another instrument. Right. You know, it's yeah. such a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a sound. It does a thing. It sounds great. Mm-hmm. The crush t- with a strat going into the Kemper to me makes it just alive and mm-hmm. beautiful and grand and not like right. those other two. Right. You know what I mean? But something I love. Mm-hmm. To you can see with this why people get addicted to being an always on compressor guy. Yeah. Because it's just kind of better. Yeah. And and with a lot of like, you know, tracks for like for recording and stuff like that, you know, you can just like kiss the signal with it. You don't have to go yeah. crazy with yeah. it. You can just have it on yeah. there and it just sort of helps. Yeah. And it helps like kind of homogenize your playing too. Like on well, that high stuff I was doing, you, that it lets that pop out yeah. versus some of the other stuff. So yeah. And first from the chain, is that kind of where you normally run? The compressor. I know we do on the tone junkie stuff. That's that's where I like it. Mm-hmm. There's a school of thought that says compressor comes after drive mm-hmm. because that more closely simulates how an amp works, where right. there's where there's a lot of compression happening in the power section and really the, the rectifier tube, mm-hmm. which is after the preamp and the power set. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, in something like a plexi, like sag is at the end. Right. You know. Um, but let's not forget, we also have a compressor in the amp section. We do, right? and that's yeah. yeah. So you can increase the the compression there. Mm-hmm. You also could put a compressor anywhere in the chain, right? And we'll have to do a video on double compressors, yeah. Because adding just two of these compressors back to back is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, just what it does, right? And that'll be a separate video. But these things are off. This is awesome. Yeah, it's cool. And I, th- I think this is one that a lot of people maybe don't go in and tweak because mm-hmm. yeah. they, they didn't know. Yeah. I didn't even know what some of those knobs did. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, I mean, just easy to try and, yeah. and go check it out for yourself. We're in a sweet spot to me. People can look at these settings. Mm-hmm. 4.8 on the intensity. So we're not, we're, we're, we're limiting a lot, mm-hmm. right? But we're also, but we're allowing for some touch sensitivity, right. which we're probably getting rid of also by squashing it so much, Mm -hmm. right? So that that intensity knob is gonna be less sensitive on the bottom end. Mm -hmm. That squash knob is really aggressive. It's really limiting, making it very squishy. Mm -hmm. When we come in here, I'm bringing the mix to 65 and because of that, I'm giving myself a little volume boost to get me back and really just a slight thing above Unity. Mm -hmm. But I could back that off too, put it at 0.8 or something and probably get it to Unity. If on the that's, volume? Yeah, if mm-hmm. that's what you want to do. But you can hit the front a little better. You can you can you can sort of do all that. Mm-hmm. And it really I mean, how does it feel to play? Well let me play it again. I'll do some <laughs> neck this has all been bridge, I'll do some neck uh, pickup here. <laughs> Sustain. How does it feel to play? It's good. Yeah, bloom is a good word. You know, in, in this, it's, it sort of has a um, a springiness, you yeah. know, to yeah, it, yeah, yeah. where you kind of um, it feels like it's filling in some of those gaps, similar yeah. to like reverb, mm-hmm. kind of fills in the in between. Uh, you know, if you're playing in the yeah. in between. Yeah, totally. This kind of you know fills in that gap of like decay, letting you just sort of level out a little bit. Yeah. You know, which is it's really nice, man. It would be really cool to try and match this thing to some of the the pedals we love. Right. That that could be a thing. The old A B. Yeah. You know, I think you could get pretty close to a lot of stuff here. Mm-hmm. I think I saw a guy online trying to do that. Our buddy Ryan. 
Right, trying to flop. Between it's it's our buddy Ryan. I'm saying yeah. a guy online so, because not everyone knows Ryan. <laughs> I, I would have just said to you, Ryan. Ryan did. <laughs> yeah, and he's got a cool trick where he's putting in the loop. I guess Ryan and just, just going AB. back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And that way you, you kind of forget what's which is which. Yeah, and, yeah. And just play. Yeah. I've gone Kemper only at home. I'm using pedals sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, just for fun. Um, but I could get a sound I'm really happy with with this with this. Mm-hmm. Thing. And so for me, I don't need anything else. It would be cool if one day they said, here's the Ross compressor. But I think the opportunity for that is in is also in here and in the user base. Mm-hmm. To go, here's my version of a Ross. Here's something like how I set the uh, the Cali 76. Right. Here's something like the, you know, the Bloom or mm-hmm. my favorite whatever. And we're just on the cusp of sharing presets, apparently. Just on the cusp. It's almost the, here. The time we make this video, it's about <laughs> to be here. Hope that was helpful, dudes. My name's HW. The Suze. Place out, Suze. I will.